I'm Jason Morris, Chief Planning Officer, Charlotte Area Transit System. Been there for uh, almost uh, 24 years now, so time to, does does go by very quickly. Tonight, I'm going to talk about you know, lots of times when we give these presentations, we talk a lot about projects that we're working on, the aspirational plans that we want to do, but we don't often get into the actual details of what it means to like run a large transit agency and, and what it takes to do that, and the nuts and bolts of that. So I'm gonna, I have some of that up front. And so I'll go quickly through that and get to some of the more inspirational discussions. Uh, this is not an agenda, but this is kind of like themes of this presentation. I think Ed talked a bit about the thing. So in order for cats to do anything, for CDOT, for planning, for any of the municipalities within Michael County, you must have supporting visions if you want to advance it. If it, if it doesn't connect across jurisdictions, if a road goes from four to two, or the bike line doesn't go across certain areas within our community, you need that contiguous like vision to support one another. And you don't do it without partnerships, without local funding, without state funding, without federal funding, without support from the community. Uh, if projects don't have support, they often don't get there. And if you don't have supporting visions and have that partnerships in place, it's really difficult to advance the vision. And then uh, I'll kind of close out with how we're trying to move forward as an agency to improve and also how we connect opportunities overall. But for us, this started going back to like 24, 25 years ago. This did start as a vision. But it didn't start out entirely as a transition. It started out as a growth management vision. We were growing at a rapid clip in the mid 1990s. And a group of people got together to talk about a regional growth management strategy around transit land use. That led to the five quarter rapid transit system plan called the 25 Transit and Land Use Plan. That was put in front of voters in 1998. It was approved. We've had a half cent sales tax for transit ever since. Everything that we've done from, from uh, buses to trains uh, to service levels to staffing up came from that decision by the Metro County voters in 1998. And on the ballot at the same time, wasn't So I think one message that we want to convey, I think, is a lot what Ed's talking about is the fact that all layers of the building all has to advance for it to be successful. And that vision was about growth, it was about managing that growth across five rapid transit corridors throughout our community, one to the north, to the town centers of Cornelius and Davidson, southeast of Matthews, west of the airport, northeast of the University of North Charlotte, and south to Pineville. But what often gets forgotten is that this original plan was bus rapid transit, almost entirely. It was one light rail line to the south, one commuter rail line to the north, using the tracks that go through the towns of Cornelius of, of and Davidson. The community really likes rail, and you'll see that as we go through the presentation today, it's entirely light rail, and it's a very different plan, much more impactful plan, more expensive, but it is a plan from the work that I have done is, is support. We've recommended BRT a number of times uh, through our community bus traffic transit, and people like rail, and uh, I think that's something that comes through. As you also will talk about today, is that there has to be a middle road, a middle ground. How do we do bus priority? How do we make treatments to make buses better? Maybe not bus rapid transit, but bus priority. We'll talk about. Uh, the growth, we talked about growth a bit, and we first know about numbers. Uh, we threw out a bunch of numbers, you know, over 25 years ago. We thought by 2025, we would have almost a million people in the county. We hit that uh, almost 10 years ago. We already have a million people in the county. And you can see there across the board, uh, explosive growth for every community within that county. Uh, but through those partnerships and through that funding, we've expanded bus service countywide, we build park and ride transit centers. We do regional express service to counties adjacent to us in Gaston County, Union County, and Rock Hill in South Carolina. Uh, we build light rail and street park, and things that were not really intended as part of the original plan, like the rail trip. Uh, I think people, you know, I've heard people say that, you know, People that come visit us from other transit agencies, they come cry our light rail, they be talking about the rail trail. And just seeing that kind of holistic approach to that has really kind of transformed our thinking to how we approach projects. And now as we move light rail projects, we're doing rail trail planning at the same time as we're doing these big expensive projects. And not doing it after the fact like we did with some of the blue line projects. Um, a little bit about so we have two kind of you know guiding documents to solve with the 2025 plan, it's called the 2030 plan. We've got seven years to finish it. <laughs> uh, more, more details of that is five quarters, still five quarters, uh, added street car, extensions of Valentine, but it's all life on this part. Uh, we also have a document and plan.
Planning Organization and I, and that's been adopted by our board, uh, the Metropolitan Transit Commission. A little back to what about CATS, we are a city department, county funded, so we report up to the city manager, but we have a policy board called the Metropolitan Transit Commission, which is made up all the mayors at the county, that makes decisions on where corridors, prioritization of projects and services. So we kind of have two bosses uh, in that space. But they adopted both of these documents. And this is my right. This is the first time they went to the strategic bus document to them. It was adopted in 2022. Bus, of course, mobility hubs, and on demand transit. So this will serve as a framework of how we look to improve transit service development. Uh, we serve the service area population about 1.3 million. Service area square miles is 675. And you can see there our mix of vehicles of ATV battery electric buses that we're testing. I don't know slide about that. Uh, we also do paratransit. That's something that we don't talk a lot about, but it's such a critical piece of the services that we do. We serve people uh, that of need that are either disabled or unable to use uh, our local transit services directly to doctor medical appointments. Who we serve? Uh, we recently did a um, origin destination study as part of the Blue Mountain Extension Project in 2022. And, uh, and we looked at demographics of travel markets and get an understanding of who, before we started to who's the population. You can see that only 70% of the customers are people, but 60% less than 60,000 per year. But I think what's really important that the vast majority of people which are service them have a job. They are going to work, they are going to groceries, they are going to things. A lot of people need a, a transport to complete their trip, one or two types of bus or rail to get to complete their journey. Uh, a lot of people want to work or school. But what we did see, you know, we do a survey every so many years. We did one in 2013 before the Blue Line extension started construction. And we did one after it opened, too. And the share of zero cars was increased, while the share of people who own cars uh, decreased. So our population, you know, at that moment in time, when we took the survey, had more people who were dependent upon transit. So that makes what we do each and every day that much more. Travel is something that as we we're looking at where people are coming from, how they use our services is kind of indicates and the, the intensity of where our ridership comes from today. You can see there that's primarily in the city of Charlotte. But we draw from across the county and region, most of the bus routes are most of the county. Uh, but we see many, many more people using this for special events. And like we try to, as we come out of the pandemic, what is it? Where are our travel markets? The travel markets have changed for us in the past like five years. You know, uh, people ask me about pre pandemic ridership. I said, Tell me when the pre pandemic world comes back. I'll tell you when pre pandemic ridership comes back. Because the world's different. People work and act and travel differently, and we must react and adapt. But we are seeing, you know, we, you know, this big dip here, uh, this, when we see graphs go down, it's not good. So, at the very bottom of that, is the, is the uh, pandemic, and uh, I think the translation of it would be if messed up my context. Uh, but here's the bottom of that is uh, 2021, uh, the pandemic hit, but we slowly are coming out of it. But we're seeing our ownership levels turn, and with ridership has increased more than 50% on us since January of 2022. And we're estimating that positive trend uh, to continue. Just to give you some context, the blue line carried about 6,000 people a day, roughly in January of 2022. Today, we're somewhere around 16 to 18,000 a day. So we are seeing a lot of recovery in that space. Right before the pandemic, it was 30,000 a day, just giving you more numbers. So, how do we plan and the service to meet the needs of our customers? This is one of those PowerPoint rules I was talking about. I'm not going to read all this. You know, this is intentional to show you kind of the complications of when you hear in the news that there's a management company that runs the bus system, but CAS doesn't run it. Uh, and so really what that means is all that all this means here is that we have a management company that runs the bus system for us, that manages our operators and mechanics because we can't negotiate as a city department. And that's just kind of the, that's the rule of that. We have a new management company that's coming in in February, and we hope to see some real positive changes with the new management team coming in with us, primarily in the hiring of operators and the main uh, so listing of our service types 57 routes across the county. We'll see mobile express services operate uh, on the peak hour, morning, and afternoon. Uh, we run service from 5 a.m. to 2 a.m. We, we here at our show is 8 
Uh, average screen age is, is 9.7. Ideally, we wouldn't get that down to six. So you're going to see us buying a lot more buses over the coming years. Uh, blue line, 19 miles, 26 stations across the county. And you're going to see Charlotte all the way down, just shy. Gold line, four miles, primarily in uptown, 17 stations open in 2015. Air transit, you know, we, we carry you know, just, just right up to that 4,000 people in fiscal year 2023. And we have, you know, on our books, you know, just over 5,000 people who use our services. It's a door to door service. And uh, to carry them, you know, average one of the uh, half miles throughout the city of And we have two bus garages that I'll give the sun, so I'll try on the real facility. Boulevard. Uh, we have over 3,000 bus stops and 268 shelters. We're working towards improving that. We have four transit centers across our community one in Uptown, uh, the transportation center, one off the base of the road, one of parks, one of the stuff, right? uh, sharing them in the central, one in the south part of the area uh, below. below. Uh, we have uh, parking rides across the community 17 for express bus. We have just uh, the oldest parking spaces for the big spaces. A big piece of work here, let's talk about more is improving the customer experience. How do we look at the things that that many people may not notice that you're doing, but they'll notice that you're not doing? How do we improve things easier to understand? So you're going to use the website, but then more amenities at bus stops. So we're all big of us are working many things that are not. Improving how it is to uh, safety and security is a big piece of that. And say to good repair, uh, we have over the past year have had some issues with our bridges and our rails and our vehicles. And we're spending a lot of time and effort and energy to get our fleet to a good state, our on our, our rail and our bus and all of our industries. So a lot of work is coming from that. So how do we build mobility? Uh, we're going to do that with the 2030 transit system plan and the vision line ride effort. All about wood line, gold line, link silver line is a almost nearly 30 mile uh, light rail corridor from Union County through uh, Southeast Charlotte over to Charlotte National Airport through Uptown to Gaston County. We are planning an extension of the blue line to Community Valentine that Ed mentioned there. And then we have a, a red line commuter rail project that we want to advance. Also, making good use of the express lanes at I-77 to do bus rapid transit level service in that community. Uh, blue line open in two phases, uh, just roughly the same length, nine and a half miles each time on Newsome from 2018. And we've seen a tremendous change. If you just moved here, you may think always look like this, and it's not the case. Uh, the corridor has changed drastically over the years. And a couple of images here from 2007. And then uh, this is the Camden Park, and then another in East West, uh, one of those campuses, 2007 and 2023. So, just tremendous change in this area and intensity along this area. And we've seen an immense amount of economic development happen in this area, but it hasn't been equal across the board. We've talked about. But most of that's been concentrated to roughly where we are right now, the Ship Creek area, all the way to the Discovery Park. So we do see the potential for a lot more intensity and opportunities to be more affordable housing for the next generation of development. Charlotte Gateway Station, uh, who's ever rode the Amtrak from Charlotte? Okay. You don't have to tell me what you think about the station, but we <laughs> definitely need some improvement. Uh, but we have a plan. We are working with the state and our federal partners to, to locate a train station in uptown from Charlotte uh, Silver Line, the Red Line, Amtrak Station, uh, must come up also for interstate migration calls. So we're working with our partners at Trading Grand to do that. And with that, we'll be in for the roughly for two parcels here that are unveiled by the platform for the future station is constructed with that state and we look forward to move that budget. So, what's in store for 24? What are the projects that we're advancing and how we're moving forward? Uh, we're going to be you know, the Independence bus way. If you live in the Matthews area along Independence Boulevard, we'll be improving that bus, that middle lane, so we can start using that for buses. It's been long underused. Uh, we are doing a lot of work around busing, ADA transition, improving the disabled access. We're 
the building comfort stations for our operators and invite your own customers and, and, and moving really aggressively bridge inspection and repair program. And I know this is we don't maybe we don't talk a lot about this because stuff is really detailed. We're at a point now, these are the things that we really need to invest into to improve the quality of our services and so how are we advancing the plan? Red line, we're doing a refresh of that design. Uh, kind of if you go to the kind of the Ram Street area, if you're in Charlotte, like if you're in Camp North End, I don't think anybody's taking photos but right there where the rail goes through. That is the corridor for the Lynx Red Line from, from the northern towns. It goes right through there. And we're looking to update uh, that as uh, We're building a massive parking lot in, in, in Huntersville near the Hambright Direct and Hector Spaces. Take full advantage of that uh, facility. And we're working with Mecklenburg County to improve mobility camp connections to our facilities. And uh, Huntersville area, we uh, work with them to give them some of our land at this parking lot to enable a greenway connection from underneath uh, I-77 connected to the two. So we're really excited about this. Gold line, built already in two phases, four miles complete. We're working on the phase three effort to update the design of the line to Eastland and also to use for the annual supplies. Silver Line, a uh, big massive mega project is two phases, southeast first, west will follow. And we're advancing the southeast portion of 30% design. We'll be working on that throughout 2024. But those are numbers that we use from the federal government to take at certain levels so that we can advance to the federal pipeline. We're at a station in the Blue Line, we're at the Trolley Barn area. If you've been to the, the Trolley Barn, is there in South End. We're building a new infill station. And microtransit is a really big component of some of the work that we'll be doing. It's adopted by our board in 2022. We'll be doing on demand mobility services in the northern towns where people can plan, pay, and use services at different mobile apps. Uh, we introduced equity to our bus stop uh, amenity program. We, you know, for 20 plus years, we focused on how many people rode a bus uh, or got on at a bus stop to it, whether or not they were worthy of a shelter bench. We now have a, a new amenity scoring program. We have ranked every single bus stop within the system that has a score, and we're looking at its connection to services, how long the wait time is, wait longer for a bus. You may deserve a shelter more than a bus that comes more frequently. So. We've turned our amenity program in to be more focused on equitable access. And with that, we'll be, you'll start to see more and more shelters come online uh, throughout the next coming years. We're looking at uh, putting in, uh, some solar light pilots throughout the community and doing the dog stop programs at public shelters. So we are going to just do these in batches 50 to 100 at a time each year until how long it takes us. So. Uh, we're also going to be working on. Uh, our, our sustainability and resiliency program, apologies to make that, but essentially, Mayor Lyles is holding a big check that we just received from the federal government for $30 million, for $30 million to advance our uh, zero emissions uh, transition effort. If we are going to build the chargers at our various facilities and continuing to buy uh, battery electric buses to improve our So Vision Line Ride, improvement time, experience, and increasing access. That's mostly what that plan is about. But uh, we know that we continually need to be at adapting our plans and getting it up to date. And so we're going we're to go through an effort over the next year to take this plan that we talked a few years ago. And what needs to be changed? What needs to be adapted to the changing travel markets and as we come out of the pandemic? And I think how we do that is to uh, work through a program for funding that we got for the FTA for the Travel Restoration Program. And uh, the intent of this graphic is to, when you go to a bus stop today, it says Route 3 to Plaza and you're on Davidson, that means absolutely nothing to you. And so how do we take our system to be more attractive, easier to understand so that you can look at a sign and know within a few seconds, is that route going to Uptown? Is it 20 minutes? And look, use colors and numbers to help so the whole lot rebranding the system will be underway. Mobility Hub, we throw these images up that, and we throw these words out kind of casually, and then we show you images of everything that can happen in the Mobility Hub, but really all of the Mobility Hub can be by that a bit. It just builds upon our existing infrastructure, stops, stations, and parking rides, and makes sure that it's usable by all access of very good levels. 
And how we do that is building the things around that, making it future ready for mobility services, mobility finding shelters, uh, integrating technology, putting the pedestrian investments that and integrate those stations into uh, and those bus bays into the strategy. So how do we move forward? And we know we're you know, we are coming out of the pandemic. We are increasing ridership. Our labor force is stabilizing. We were really struggling to find operators getting to a good spot now. Transitioning from zero emission states, data good repair. We're increasing our benefits to our operators to attract labor force. And we're strengthening our reach partnerships through efforts called Connect Beyond because we're not only competing for money with Raleigh or Greensboro, we're competing with regions across the nation for federal dollars to build out our uh, rapid transit. So we've been working for a number of years on a 12 county, two state plan called Connect Beyond that seeks to create mobility friendly places, basically such the integrating lines, expanding mobility choices, uh, and things like micro transit, uh, connecting our human services, which is air transit, special transportation services, large geography, Build a better bus network, work with our partners and neighboring transit agencies to connect better, and start helping our, our neighbors to start planning for better transit destinations. Uh, we talk a lot about population, we talk a lot about Charlotte, but this uh, over like 2045 is anticipated that it'll be over of 4 billion people. And so, how will that growth happen? How will we connect them across the population? And I'll close out with a couple of slides that for challenge and charge. You ensure the infrastructure is equitable and sustainable. But as we go through this kind of next generation of major infrastructure investments, that we are being mindful of the impacts that we must have across all areas, and that we should try to leverage that now across the region to make sure that And, you know, for transit agencies, you know, travel time is how we help the most the community. To move with uh, the socioeconomic ladder. 2015, it's called the Chetty study that was done in 2015 at Harvard University. And since then, one thing that's been very clear in this study is that travel time is a single basic indicator of how a person moves up uh, economically. So, if we can improve travel time, we can find ways to make that easier, uh, more equitable, and accessible. We can do great things, but it's going to take a couple, it may take a couple generations to do that. And so, that's for us, it's like we need to open. We have to plan for both sides of the age group. You know, if you think most people that are too young to drive or too old to drive are not able to drive, we have to think about them and, and think about each of us as we go through those phases of life and plan for that mobility. 